I don't know about you, but I'm still kind of reeling from the announcement of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. It's still kind of hard to believe that it's actually happening, but if Konami really wants to follow in the footsteps of Nintendo, Sega, and Sony by releasing one of these mini consoles, odds are they are more than likely watching our reactions like a hawk engaging support for certain games and features to add to the console so they can make sure it sells as well as possible. So with that in mind, as a lifelong TurboGrafx fanboy, I'll go ahead and throw my hat into the ring with my list of 20 essential games that need to be on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, in my opinion. The TurboGrafx is well known for shooters, so I think it makes sense to drop several of them on the Mini. And one of the absolute best ones, if not the best one, is Soldier Blade. Ideally, we would get all three Star Soldier games, but if we have to pick just one of them for some reason, I think Soldier Blade is the way to go. It's got the best music, the best graphics, and the gameplay is just about perfect in terms of overhead shooters. Soldier Blade really just has it all. It's also really rare and expensive these days, so people that don't have their copy from childhood probably have a hard time encountering ways to play it. So it would make sense to go ahead and throw it on the mini. For the next three games, I gotta go with the Bonk games. These three should pretty much be a given for the TurboGrafx Mini, not just because Bonk was the mascot of the system, but also because they're actually really great games. These are all platformers that can be played and enjoyed by just about anybody. They have great music, they have colorful graphics, good variety with the levels, and they're very unique games with this anime caveman slamming his head into dinosaurs and other things. I'd prefer the first one if we had to choose one, but honestly, I don't see any reason why we can't have all three. Konami owns Hudson Soft, Hudson Soft made Bonk. I think these three games should be a given. Anybody with even a passing knowledge of the Turbo's library is probably at least aware of Splatterhouse. It definitely stands out in the library as being one of the most disturbing and gory games of its time. Beating the crap out of monsters with your bare hands, throwing spears into zombies from across the room, kicking giant leech things in the air, and shooting giant insane dudes with chainsaws for hands with shotguns barely scratches the surface of how great this game gets. The sequels that came out later on the Genesis definitely outdid the original in my opinion, but there's always going to be something special about the original on the TurboGrafx, and no collection of TurboGrafx games is ever quite complete without Splatterhouse. And if I had my way, I'd like to see an option to toggle on the Japanese visuals to restore the original white mask and the battle with the upside down cross to their original vision. But either way, I'd love to see Splatterhouse on the mini, and if it's not on there, that would be a huge missed opportunity. The TurboGrafx doesn't have very many racing games, but if we're gonna have to pick one to represent the genre, I think it should be Final Lap Twin. For the most part, it plays like a pretty average 16-bit racing game, but the draw with this game is the fact that there's a single-player mode, but there's also two-player split-screen and even an RPG story mode, where races pop up randomly like battles would in a normal RPG. You could definitely make an argument for Victory Run, but out of those two games, I'd say Final Lap Twin gives you the most bang for your your buck with all of this content. Also, the dialogue is pretty great. Another game in the same vein as Final Lap Twin is World Court Tennis. The primary difference being it's tennis. Basically, the game is structured the exact same way, though. There's a single player, there's multiplayer, and an RPG story mode with random tennis matches that pop up as you explore the overworld. The only downside of World Court Tennis is how deceptively hard it is to play against the computer. Or maybe I'm just terrible at it. I don't know, but I've always struggled with that. But I think the two-player local mode is more than enough reason to put this on the TurboGrafx Mini for the sake of variety and having another two-player game on the system. Alien Crush was already announced for the console, but I still want to go ahead and underline that and pair it with Devil's Crush. You really need both of these games. Both of these games are big time no-brainers for the TurboGrafx Mini, especially if you're going to include one of them, you really need to include the other. They're both so unique and crazy with how they take video pinball and make it so much more than that with insane bonus levels, super interesting artwork, and some absolutely outstanding music that really makes them remarkable even today.
Other than maybe the Bonk games, both of these pinball games should be top priority for Konami to get on the system. Not just because they're great, but they also really show off the diversity of the Turbo's library by being so different and so outstanding at the same time. Blazing Lasers was always a crowd favorite for the Turbo Graphics. It's got pretty much everything that you want in a good top-down shooter, while also setting itself apart from the Star Soldier series just enough to feel like its own thing. In my opinion, I still do prefer the Star Soldier games to Blazing Lasers, but there's absolutely room for both, and I think this game more than earns its own spot on the mini. Now I know some people might disagree with me on putting a golf game on the system, but I think Power Golf is a great way to show off the fact that the Turbo actually had a handful of sports games that were actually pretty good. One of the better ones, in my opinion, is Power Golf. Now the main draw with Power Golf to me is that it's extremely challenging and hardcore and it absolutely forces you to get good at it to have a score that is even remotely close to par. And I think people could still definitely get something out of it today. To me, Bloody Wolf is another no-brainer. It's a relatively straightforward top-down shooter, much like Ikari Warriors or Mercs, but honestly, I just think it's better than those games. Bloody Wolf definitely sports some great weapons and levels, and more of that dependably outstanding Turbo Graphics music. <laughs> Now, as I understand it, the rights to Bloody Wolf are not currently under Konami or Hudson. It was a Data East game and Data East got dissolved, so I'm really not sure who owns the game at this point. So I'm not too sure if we'll get this one, but if there is a way, I strongly urge Konami to figure it out and get this game on the mini. Here's another game that allows multiple people and offers up something relatively unique for Turbo's library. Military Madness was never quite my cup of tea as I tend to not really have patience for strategy games like this, but I do appreciate how straightforward it is. There's not a whole lot of frills to it. You just get in there, you direct your team the best you can, and you just try to keep an eye out for advantages that you might be able to gain from elevation. Lots of people do love this game, and I think it would make a good addition to the mini since it encourages two players and it brings something different to the table. Now here's a shooter that you're unlikely to see other people recommend, but that's not for it being a bad game. I think most people just haven't heard of it. Psychosis is easily one of the most outrageously creative and challenging shooters on the system. Its gameplay and difficulty is very solid, but where it stands out mostly is in its downright bizarre art direction and music style. There's really nothing else quite like it. The next two games are Legendary Axe 1 and 2. The Legendary Axe games are nearly synonymous with the Turbo Graphics itself. It goes without saying that they should both be on the mini, but I'll say it anyway. I tend to prefer the second one, but I won't even recommend that they pick one over the other because I think it's extremely important to have both. They both kind of do their own thing and they have their own style, but what they have in common is great bosses, fun levels that mix up horizontal design with some verticality, and of course, outstanding music. Keith Courage was the pack-in game for the Turbo, and thusly was most people's first game for the system. For that sort of historical reason alone, I think it should be included on the mini, but I'll go a step further and recommend it because it's also a really great game. Sure, it's no Legendary Axe, it's no Devil's Crush, and it probably shouldn't have been the pack-in game, it probably should have been either of the latter that I just mentioned, but it's still pretty great in its own right. A lot of people complain about the overworld sections being boring compared to the underworld sections, which definitely makes sense because those underworld sections are way more emblematic of what games on the Turbo were like, but you know what? I think the overworld sections are fine. The fact that you're going back and forth between the two makes the game a little more unique, and they served as nice little rest stops in between the real shit. With Bomberman being one of the most quintessential Hudson licenses, I think it's fairly obvious that we're going to get it on the mini, and that's a good thing. Who doesn't love Bomberman? Now they could go with either Bomberman 93 or the OG Bomberman, I think they're both fine, but 93 probably holds up a little bit better for modern players with all the variety that that game has, so I would say let's go for that one. 
I feel like it doesn't get brought up enough, so I'm bringing it up now. Air Zonk was Hudson's last attempt to make Bonk cool and compete with characters like Sonic. And while that definitely comes off as a bit forced and unorganic in some ways, at the end of the day, the game ended up being one of the best combinations of loud, wacky art styles and insanely awesome soundtracks the Turbo Graphics would ever get. Between the weapons, the enemies, the levels, everything is just great. The only problem is that the game's a little bit short, but I think this would blow a lot of people away who hadn't seen it before. Speaking of underrated shooters, Cybercore is one of the most commonly forgotten games on the system. It's not particularly complex or difficult, and most players with moderate skill could probably beat it in just one sitting. But the insect theme of everything and the ability to upgrade your own ship into several different insect creatures really makes it stand out in my opinion. The level design and the music are not quite on the level of some other games on this list, but I still think it's an interesting enough game to stand on its own, and it earns a spot on the Turbo Graphics Mini. Hopefully you didn't think I was going to go this whole list without bringing up JJ and Jeff. I've watched a few other lists of games that people want on the mini, and I'm very disappointed that very few people have brought up this game. It seems relatively generic at first, but it's not long before the stupid humor and ludicrous nature of everything shows itself, and before you know it, you've been jumping over otters and spraying dogs and kicking trash cans for four hours. On top of that, the soundtrack is in a league of its own, with some of the catchiest tunes of the entire 16-bit era. As far as I know, JJ and Jeff is still a Hudson property, so the odds of us getting it on the mini should be pretty good. Well, there's honestly a lot of games that I'd like to see on the system, but those are the 20 that I think should absolutely be on there first. Now, I am a hardcore TurboGrafx fan, if you couldn't tell, and I've been playing the console since I was a kid, so I'm probably gonna buy this thing no matter what they put on it. But I think if they include a good variety of games and a few features, like maybe some storage space for leaderboard scores and save states and scan lines and stuff like that, they'll have a great chance of gaining the interest of people who might not have much experience with the system, and people who might have had interest at one time, but then went on eBay and saw how expensive everything was and decided to pass, and that is where the success for this console really lies. So I hope to see these games and more on the mini. There's really no reason why we shouldn't have well over 20. I'm thinking 40 or 50 would actually be a good number to aim for if they really wanted to knock it out of the park. But those are just my thoughts for now. Be sure to let me know what games you think should be on the mini in the comments below, and until then, thanks for watching.